dog, puppy. I don't know. I thought it'd be cute to put him on camera again. Because he ain't getting on the bed right now for whatever reason. Well, I kind of know the reason. Our air conditioner is being a little bit on the fritz right now. And we just have to get it looked at. I mean, it's not stifling or anything like that. And this is, you know, Nebraska and it is hot. But it's not that bad right now. So I don't know why he's not laying on the bed. I'm like, my coworker's like, oh, to be the dog and have the ability to just lay down on any hard, flat surface and fall asleep. I'm like, well, you know. Yep, to have that ability. So, uh, this is the third installment in one of the uh, series I did a while ago, or a two-part thing I did a little while ago. This is um, the uh, like the class 1A or the students in general, um, kind of just being teens, being kids, these moments where you still see us. It's like, yeah, they're, you know, superheroes and they're training and how to be, you know, superheroes and save people and everything, but they're also just still teenagers at the same time. So, um, I did one that was about just like, other moments of them relaxing. I have one that focused more on the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the cultural festival and everything. And then this one is just kind of focusing more on like um, some of the other things that we've seen since the cultural festival, and then leading up through kind of this um, this last arc that we've had, um, which kind of dwindles a little bit more down the line. But there is still some moments in there where they are just having fun and being teenagers and just being, you know, like a, a class of friends and everything. So. Um, Let's start with that. So uh, the first one that I have on the list is just kind of a basic thing of like um, the girls hanging out. We see um, the girls from class 1A hang out quite a bit. Um, you know, we see that in like a bunch of the end credits. We see them hanging out or training or whatever. And then of course we just see other moments where we see them like sitting around and talking, um, you know, in the evenings or like, you know, different moments like that. Uh, we also see them like teasing each other about like, oh, they tease Araka about having a crush on Deku and everything. You know, it, you know, those funny things there that we see, um, you know, there's not too much there, but you know, it's just nice to see them interact with each other and just kind of be kids, be, you know, the way that normal teenagers would be, you know, talking and hanging out with your friends, particularly if you all live in like a dormitory system, because we see the same thing at Hogwarts and Harry Potter, so, and other areas where they have like a dormitory system, um, uh, other one that I did want to put here is uh, we see them hanging out with Aerie quite a bit, not just um, uh, the girls hanging out with Aerie, which we do see a little bit, but uh, we also see like Izuku and Mirio hanging out with Aerie quite a bit and just having, you know, helping her have fun and everything. And some of it, yeah, is involved with training her powers, but it's also just, you know, being around her also kind of reminds them why they're being heroes, why they want to get stronger, why they want to do all of this. Um, so that's just always nice there. Um, and of course we see them, you know, with, uh, around Aerie too, with, you know, um, the rest of the class around Aerie, because they just like to fawn over her and everything, particularly, uh, Uraka and Sue, uh, like to fawn over Aerie and everything, which is just kind of fun. Um, cause like, I mean, like Sue has a younger sister, so she kind of knows how to deal with kids, but like Uraka doesn't have any siblings. Um, so we just kind of see that a little bit for just like how they interact with Aerie and how they interact, um. Uh, you know, with Kota a little bit as well when they see him. Um, also, I wouldn't be surprised if during the whole time frame that, like, all of the civilians have been staying at, um, at UA, I wouldn't be surprised if there were times when, you know, maybe the kid, you know, maybe the classes would go and, like, see some of the kids that are there and try to help them, you know, you know, help the kids relax or help the kids have a little bit of fun at times, maybe. Um, and then we have the, uh, the, we have class 1A and class 1B hanging out after they have the, um, you know, their, 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 their big battles, their clashes and everything that they have. Um, I do like how it's like, you know, it is, you know, the two classes have a rivalry, which is like understandable. Um, I, I, I wish that, um, you know, I, you know, it's just like, I do kind of wish Monoma kind of wasn't there, but there's a reason why Monoma's there, particularly now he's actually getting a, a moment to shine in the, in the, uh, the end, in this, uh, last arc at the moment, um, uh, with, you know, using his quirk and everything to be able to help against, you know, Shigaraki and everything, but, um, I just, there's a lot that happens with that. I just, like, I don't always know what to say about Monoma, but we're going to move away from Monoma and just kind of, you know, I like seeing the two classes kind of hang out. I wish that we got a little bit more of that. I mean, like, we kind of have them working together a little bit with what's going on in the final battle right now. Um, but, 
you know, having the two classes actually work together, it's very good. It's a good thing to have happen. And like, you know, after the whole, you know, after the different battles and everything, um, you know, we have them all like hanging out in the dorms and just relaxing and everything. Um, and I wish that we could see more of that uh, throughout the course of the series. That would be nice. Um, just so they don't feel quite so isolated. Um, also, it might make Monoma be less a holy. Um, but yeah, because I'm like Kendo and Momo get along fine. And then there's like other ones that seem to get along great because we know that, um, <laughs> we know that, um, Hiroshima and, uh, Tetsu, 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 um, I love that name, uh, that they get along fine and that they both end up, uh, interning with Fat Gum, uh, during their like second or third round of internships or whatever. We know that they're both there. Um, so it just like, you know, it'd be kind of interesting to see other interactions because we know that some of them also got paired up together with other class 1B members when they were doing their internships as well. So, yeah. Um, so uh, next up we have the uh, celebration for Shoto and uh, Katsuki when they are getting their, after they get their uh, provisional licenses, um, after they have that, um, you know, after they finish their classes and pass and they get their licenses and everything, we have like a little party that class 1A throws for them after that, um, which is just kind of nice to just kind of, you know, celebrate the rest of their class now, their whole class being able to be heroes and everything. Um, so that's just kind of nice. I do like that. Um, and then of course, like, I do like the fact that they like, they, they rip on Bakugo, um, when he's like getting made fun of, but, uh, when they make fun of him for like during the interview, when he cannot be interviewed correctly, cause he just keeps yelling. <laughs> and then Shoto gets all the screen time and Bakugo's just like angry in the corner. I love that. That is funny. Um, also on that route, we have, uh, you know, the, the, the class Christmas and everything where we have, you know, Aerie there, but then we also have them just all hanging out with each other. And then, of course, when they go and visit their families, also very important. Um, I know that it's kind of stated that, like, the kids don't get to leave campus that much without having a uh, chaperone, um, which I kind of understand given the state with, like, the League of Villains at the time. But, you know, and also, like, Deka City had just happened uh, during that time frame in regards to Christmas. So, you know, I don't blame the school for being a, a bit more cautious about that. Um, but I do like seeing them. I, I, the Christmas episode of the Christmas chapter is just one of my favorite things. I did a whole discussion video a while ago about that and just like the gifts and everything and Aerie with the giant freaking sword that's bigger than her, which I still find hilarious. Um, yeah. Uh, another one that I did want to point out is um, uh, it's kind of well, it's an added in episode that's just kind of anime only, but it makes perfect sense for this to happen, is uh, when uh, Sue and Ochaku, along with uh, Ryuko and her girls and everything, go and help Selkie and Sirius help, uh, Sirius help with um, uh, dueling, like, it's actually someone that I think actually is transporting trigger and everything, but we have the moment where they have like the beach party in the episode. Um, and it's just like all the girls having fun. And it's like, it's a fan service. And the fact that it gets a bunch of them into like, you know, swimsuits and bikinis and everything. Um, but again, you know, the way that Horikoshi draws his characters is uh, much different than the way that like Oda draws his characters. They're still not exactly a hundred percent human proportion, but they're much closer to human proportion than what Oda does. Um, yeah. Um, uh, but we see, like, all of them, you know, we see, like, the girls all just having fun and everything like that. And we even see, like, Ryuko and Saki, like, sitting back and relaxing as they, like, watch the girls have fun and everything before they do their big um, takedown of, like, the people with Trigger and everything. And uh, what we see, you know, we see them just, like, talking and everything. And, like, Ryuko's like, you wanted them to do this so that they would remember why... Uh, what they're trying to protect and basically yeah that is the the gist of it and I like how they throw that in there and that's kind of one of the things that made me want to do these videos uh, for you know the kids being teens is that the fact that yes they have you know they have these powers they're training to be heroes they've dealt with villains all of them in some way shape or form but they also need to remember that they need to have fun and they also need to remember why they're doing what they're doing, why they wanted to become heroes in the first place. So that's just another another thing with that. You know, you want to remember why you wanted to do this in the first place. Because it's like, if you forget your motivation for why you wanted to do something, then 
you know, what are you going to do? You don't have your motivation anymore, so you don't remember why you wanted to do this in the first place. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I like that they show that. It's just like them just having fun and relaxing and everything. Having a weird barbecue is one of the things that they do. Uh, the other one is, um, that I did want to point out, which kind of happens at around the same time because it's happening during the, um, like the internships is, um, during, of course, the Endeavor Agency arc when some of this stuff happens is, of course, when, um, uh, Fuyumi has Endeavor bring over, you know, uh, Shoto is a good Bakugo over to the house to have dinner. And they just, you know, she just wants to have this nice dinner with them at the end of their work study and everything to celebrate that, you know, all of them have done really well and that they've, you know, made advancements in their, you know, in their abilities and everything. And she also just wants to meet, you know, Shoto's friends. And she, even in that time frame, she, like, thanks Suzuku for being Shoto's friend and for, like, helping him come out of his shell and everything. And we kind of saw the payoff for that uh, very recently in the, um, uh, during Shoto's battle against um, Toya, against Dobby. We saw that very recently as a, a result of that, with the fact that he finally said, yes, this is my power um, in regards to his quirk, um, with both halves of his quirk. Um, but we have that dinner. Unfortunately, that dinner kind of ends up kind of being um, interrupted by um, whatever his name, Lines, Stripes, I don't remember, whatever it was, the, the villain that attacked that, like, took Natsuo hostage and then like Endeavor had to fight him and then like it was like the, the boys that saved um Natsuo um but you know so there's that but I don't um you know uh there's that moment there that I do like you know Fumi like thanking Izuku of course um which I do like and then <laughs> um uh after that because things just kind of uh kind of go downhill after that pretty quickly because of course that's you know shortly after that is when they have the hospital radar happen and when they, you know, have the huge battle with the, the Paranormal Liberation Army and everything, and when, you know, people die, the heroes died, you know, classmates get injured, um, you know, the heroes get injured and everything like that. And, you know, all this stuff happens and everything. Like, yeah, they get people captured, but then a lot of people, you know, still got hurt, including civilians and everything, particularly with Shigatsumakia and everything. And... You know, and like midnight die. Oh god, midnight. Oh god. Um, midnight. Um, I'm still, I'm still sad about that. Um, that happens at the anime. I'm gonna cry. And I know it. Um, ah, sorry. Um, back to happy. Well, kind of happy. Um, but you know, we, we see all of that happen, and then of course, you know, Tsuzuku goes off, and he goes on his like, I'm gonna go be a vigilante now because I. I have to do this on my own, even though he's had a kind of like brow beat into him multiple times over the uh, series. I was just like, you can't do this on your own. <laughs> you know, by, by Bakugo, by Shoto, by Ida, by, you know, a bunch of other people. Um, but he still, you know, goes off on his own um, and everything. And of course, we don't really get too much else happy after that, but I will throw in the fact that, um, you know, when, you know, there is kind of those, those, that bright moment where the class finally gets to Izuku and they're like, you know, they're trying to, you know, get him to calm down and everything and get him to just kind of fall the F asleep so they can take him back to the dorms and give him a bath and food. And then they do finally get it back to the dorms. And I like this. I love the funny scene that I just basically, it's like, I basically figured this was going to happen in the manga. Uh, when this, I, I kind of, we basically figured this was going to happen whenever they got Izuku back to the dorms and everything. Like, after the whole ordeal with, like, getting into, like, getting the, um, you know, the, the civilians to, like, allow them to bring Izuku into the school and everything. And Araka's whole speech and everything. And they get him into the school and everything. And he's, you know, reunited with his mother, which is good. But, um, you know, they get them in, uh, I was like, I love how basically like the first couple of pages of like one of the next chapters is literally just like um a class 1a and all the boys grabbing Izuku dragging him into the bath driving him into the uh, communal bathroom that they have um for the boys and like getting him stripped and like getting the water all set and ready in the tub and then like they just like spray him down with like a bunch of water and soap and then they just toss him into the tub <laughs> like the hot tub <laughs> I just I found that entire thing just hilarious when I'm sitting there reading that in the manga. I'm just like, oh god. <laughs> I just, I found that so funny, and I don't know why, but I did, because it's just like, I knew that's what was gonna happen. It's just like, you know, we need to get him food, we need to get him to sleep, but first we need to get him a bath. 
and that was basically what happened. Um, and you know, they they throw him into the bathtub and everything. And, like they get him all scrubbed down and everything, so he's not covered in dirt and grime and sweat and blood anymore. <laughs> um, and then, you know, like we see all the rest of the you know the bunch of the boys are there. You know, Baku goes there and just kind of being shouty and everything, and everybody's just like, you know, get him in the tub and get him clean. <laughs> She probably didn't have like a washboard that they were like pulling as you go up and down the washboard. We gotta get all this dirt out of him. Hold on. Um, that would have been funny. Um, it's like scrub his hair, give him a haircut. Um, uh, I don't know why, but I just I just found that hilarious. Just so funny. Um, uh, but of course, you know, after that is you know after the you know after they get them all clean and give them a bath and everything, and they take them out into the uh, the 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 you know the communal area of the dorms. Um, you know, the rest of the class is kind of there and they're just all kind of talking and at some point All Might shows up in that time frame and of course Izuku ends up falling asleep uh, sometime after All Might shows up. But um, we have the moment where we see uh, Jiro grab, um, you know, Bakugo and Denki and Momo and Fum uh, uh, Fumikage uh, grab them to go and practice as the band, again, that they had for the cultural festival and the dog left. Um, and we, we haven't gotten a payoff to that yet, but I'm really hoping that there does end up being a payoff to that because basically what Jiro basically kind of said and like kind of the conversation that, you know, kind of led up to that was kind of along the lines of, well, you know, everybody here in at UA, all the different civilians that are here and all the staff that's here right now and all the students and the family and everything that are here right now, all of them are very high strung, very worried with everything that's going on right now. Perfectly understandable. None of the students blame any of the um, the civilians for being worried about what's going on outside of the walls and even within the walls of UA. They don't blame the civilians at all for that because they understand that the civilians are scared. Um, scared of, you know, all for one, of, you know, the League of Villains that's still out there, of, you know, the Middle Liberation Army or the Paranormal Liberation Army that's out there and everything. So, you know, I don't blame them for being, you know, scared about that. And the class doesn't blame them either. But they're just like, we need to do something to try to, like, cheer everybody up. And I really hope that there's a payoff for that. Um, I know that kind of the context of the manga kind of explain, you know, because after that is when we dealt with, like, Star and Stripe. And then, you know, getting, you know, Tomura kind of got his quirks kind of ripped apart. But then there's, you know, some other things that happened. Um, and they got more information thanks to uh, Stain, of all people. Um, but it, it will be very interesting to see... If there ends up being like a thing where they get like a flashback to show, um, you know, like the the band performing for the people that are at UA at the time, um, and doing something like that, doing something with like the the rest of the class and you know some of the other you know some of class one B as well and some you know some of the others to just like help the you know maybe have Jiro's parents come up, have her father play with her as well would be a good thing to do with that I would say as well, um, but just show something like that. Um, to just kind of like raise everybody's spirits before this final battle. I don't think that they actually ended up having time to do that, but I would like there to be a payoff for that since they set it up. So it's like, yeah, you know, it was really so long ago that we got the UA Trader kind of concept set up, and then that finally did get, you know, paid off. There's also the whole Trader thing that happened that kind of resulted in, oh, ha, ah, yeah, no, now we got to deal with that, with the Ayama and everything. Um, so we'll we'll kind of see where that goes, but I really hope that there's a payoff for that, and that we're, there ends up being like another performance that happens, like maybe after the entire freaking last battle is finished, maybe there will be a performance um, of the band and everything with like a bunch of the other people um, around them and everything. Um, you know, just I I hope so. I want there to be a payoff for that. Don't know if there will be, but I would like it if there was. Um, I don't really know what else they're going to show. There may not really be enough for me to do a whole other video um, at the end of this. You know, it depends on how much longer the series lasts. But, you know, after the battle is finished and everything, there might be something that I do um, in regards to if they show anything else. It's kind of like just like them being teenagers. Uh, we may also just get like a flash forward where we kind of see, oh, you know, this is where everybody ended up in the future. And I might do something about that. Um, I do still intend to do a couple of other My Hero videos beyond like the uh, the parents, the uh, family day ones that I'm doing, but um, we'll see what else I do from that. So uh, that's what I have. I thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And comment if you think I missed something that was like them being teens, um, or if you think that there's um, 
uh, some other moment that you just really like for just them actually just getting to be kids, be teenagers, and just have fun. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye. That's why you wanted them to experience this peace and give them a strong desire to protect it.